Hello racing fans, this is NASCAR Racing Fan 2015 back on our NASCAR view. And this one is on Bubba Wallace going to the 43 car in 2018. As he not only goes, but he brings a new sponsor, Click and Close, as they will be sponsoring him for, well, not very many races. So anyways, this has been a very crazy year for Richard Petty Motorsports. It's been very unprecedented and lots of, it's just been chaotic for this team. That's basically what you can sum it up as. So anyways, season starts, Eric Amarola, you know, this is his sixth, I think it's sixth season with the team. I mean, he could pull a playoff berth somewhere and, you know, he could, he could do well. And remember, Strut Haas Racing is going to Ford. So possibly this could strengthen the relationship with Roush and then ultimately help Richard Petty Motorsports. I thought at the beginning of the year that Ford was going to do really well. I really thought that they were going to be a contender again and they were going to win the manufacturer championship. Boy, was I wrong as Ford really has only won plate races this year. They swept all the plate races. After that, what else do you have? Ryan Blaney's Pocono win, Logano's Richmond win, Kozlowski's Martinsville win, and Harvick's Sonoma win. There's just, I mean, Ford has really struggled this year. Same with Chevy. I mean, it wouldn't be a bad season for either one. Oh, yeah, but Toyota's won, I think, basically, I think, more than two-thirds of the last half of the season. And basically, Toyota is net, Toyota went from third in the manufacturer race probably in June to now leading by, by a lot. I think Toyota's easily ahead. So yeah, it doesn't work out. And because of that, Richard Petty Motorsports has a mediocre year. They, Almirol was 20th in points when chaos struck the team as Eric Almirol got in that nasty crash at Kansas and basically was sidelined. And after that, we all knew his season was over. He wasn't just going to hop back in a car and win. Sure, Tony Stewart and Kyle Busch have done it, but this is Eric Almirola. You really expect anything out of that team. So anyways, they have Regan Smith for the first couple of races, and then they decide to hire Bubba Wallace because he gets let go from his ride in the six-car at Roush Fenway Racing. So they say, hey, why not give Bubba Wallace his chance? And he didn't do a terrible job. He quietly improved. He was about 15th to 20th. And he, yeah, he didn't do a bad job being put into a role as being a substitute. And he surely, everyone's like, he deserves to get it right. He deserves to be somewhere. And as that's going on, Bubba Wallace later won a race at Michigan in the truck series in a Chevrolet. So... Possibly it is the start of something big with this kid. Meanwhile, why that's all happening in Bubba Wallace and as trying to prove himself, contract negotiations are going on with Richard Petty Motorsports and Smithfield. They're one big sponsor. They're basically almost the heart and soul of this team lies in Smithfield. So basically, the team negotiated from the start of the year and, you know, early, it's like Smithfield and Richard Petty Marsports, they're pretty close to a deal. And we all expected Smithfield was going to return to the team. But then, in a shocking turn of events, in September, they announced they are going to Eric Amarola's car, and they will be leaving Richard Petty Motorsports in, in 2018. And after that, they, both sides bashed each other. Richard Petty Motorsport said, you know, they had a handshake deal and that was mean for them to walk out. Smithfield came back and said Richard Petty was a liar, a moron, and, you know, got a lot of reaction saying Smithfield, they were the bad guys in this situation. They made the wrong decision. When, if I'm completely honest, Smithfield made the right decision. I mean, it was even stated later that Richard Petty messed up. And now they're going to kiss up and be back in some sort of way. Smithfield had every single right to leave this team. The team's gotten worse and worse, it seems like, every, every, almost every single year. 
I remember when Richard Petty Motorsports was a pretty good, pretty good organization. And now they're just falling to shreds. They're down to one car now in the 43. And, you know, Richard Petty is just a handshake away from completely closing this team, to be completely honest. Let's look at all the sponsors that have been on this team. Let's see, he had Cheerios back in 2008 with Bobby Labonte. What did he do with them? Nothing. So meanwhile, Cheerios goes to RCR with Clint Boyer, and the team actually does something and makes the chase. And there's a way more successful than on the 43 car, even though they eventually ended up leaving. It was still way more successful than sponsoring the 43 car. In 2010, they merge with Ray Everham. They get four cars. They have Casey Kane and Budweiser. They have Elliot Sadler and Stanley Tools. And then... They also have Paul Menard and Menards and A.J. Allmendinger and Best Buy. The team, besides Casey Kane, is a total train wreck. And literally almost everyone in that organization gets a better deal elsewhere. In, two th uh, in 2011, Casey Kane leaves. He goes to Hendrick Motorsports. What did Casey Kane do at Hendrick Motorsports? He at least won a race more than Richard Petty Motorsports. Budweiser leaves too. Oh yeah, I wonder where Budweiser went. They're the 2014 champion with Kevin Harvick. And they have so much success with that team. Elliot Sadler also ends up leaving the team. Where does Elliot Sadler go? Oh, he goes back to the Xfinity Series. But that's not all. He actually won a couple races. And he is now a playoff contender in that series. So it looks like Elliot Sadler also got a better deal. Where does Stanley Tools go? So Stanley Tools... They left back in 2015. Guess where they go? They go to Joe Gibbs Racing. They haven't won a race yet, but hey, at least they made the playoffs or the chase in those years with Carl Edwards. At least they ran up front. I mean, sure, they won two races with Marcus Ambrose, but still not very good. They never really ran up front. And then we have A.J. Allmendinger. Let's see. He left Richard Petty Motorsports. Oh, I wonder what happened with A.J. Allmendinger. He goes to JTG Doherty Racing, and guess what he does? He wins a race at JTG Doherty Racing. He, he has the same amount of wins than the 43 team has now in, like, the last five years. Yeah, so he technically got a better deal, and, you know, he's pretty stable in that organization. Let's see. Let's see. Sponsor Best Buy. Where do they go? They go to Roush Fenway Racing, and guess what happens with them? They win the Daytona 500, the very ra the first race with Matt Kenseth and their new team. They win the Daytona 500. So they broke the Richard Petty Motorsports sponsor curse, and look what happened to them. They did well. Paul Menard, he leaves the team and takes Menards with him. Guess what happens with that team? They win the Brickyard 400 in 2011. What do you know? Paul Menard goes away and he wins a race. He also made the chase in 2015. I mean, that's the same amount of times as the 43 cars made it. So I would say Paul Menard got a better deal too. Marcus Ambrose and Eric Amarola basically make up this team for the 2012s to 2014. And Marcus Ambrose leaves, and he goes back to V8 Supercars. But, I mean, at least, at least he doesn't have to deal with uh, RPM handshaking away Stanley and DeWalt. And so in 2015, they bring in Sam Hornish Jr. For the third time, he get, I think it was the second time he gets a cup ride. And what do you know? The team sucks. The team didn't do very good. Crashed a lot. Meanwhile, Amarola, though, didn't have a bad year. He was a couple points away from advancing to the chase and knocking out. I think it was either Paul Menard or Clint, or Clint Boyer. That was a really, really weak year for the chase. But anyways, yeah, and guess what? Paul Menard made it in over him. So Menard got the better deal that year. Leave, leave Richard Petty and go on to... RCR and make the chase at least one year and 
Sam Hornish Jr. leaves, and what else? Oh, yeah, I don't even... Medallion Bank, they completely left the sport after they've been loyal to Richard Petty for all these years. And a couple other sponsors abandoned him because they know they're not getting their money's worth when they sponsor Sam Hornish Jr. Probably the most overrated, washed-up driver ever. I don't know how he keeps getting these many shots to prove himself. His career... I mean, if he gets, like, a full-time Xfinity ride, I get it. But it just seems like every time he's, like, the top for a relief or whatever. I don't, I don't know. It just seems like either put him in full-time Xfinity or give it to a rookie. He just seems like he's just wasting, wasting an opportunity in that 22. Come on, Team Penske. Either give him a ride or get rid of him. There's, there's only two options. I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous seeing how Hornish is just there anymore. He's just the guy that runs when the cup guys aren't. So anyways, then they, they hire Brian Scott. How, how desperate Richard Petty decides to get. He hires Brian Scott. They renumber at the 44 because the nine really has no historical value to Richard Petty. And later, Hendrick Motorsports took advantage and they brought the nine back to cup. But anyways, let's see how 2016 was. They weren't even close to making the chase. They were awful that year. Almirola, I think, got beat by a couple smaller teams. That was, I mean, that was the first year where I thought Richard Penny Motorsports is not a top team anymore. They are a, they are a middle team. They are not like a broke team like BK Racing. But they are no way, shape, or form a team like even RCR or Roush. They're a water, way watered-down version, basically to the historical value. And yeah, Amarillo doesn't do good. Brian Scott wrecks a lot of cars, but he did get a second-place finish at Talladega, his only success in NASCAR. But hey, he finished second. I mean, that's Chase Elliott's best finish, second. That's not bad. So anyways, we go to 2017. Guess what? They scale back to one car. Yeah, great job. After all that, you scale back to one car. So basically, I've basically been lying. I, I, I really, Richard Petty Motorsports might be the true Kmart racing. Roush Fenway is at least kept stable, at least they have sponsors. Richard Payne Motorsports lost all these sponsors and money out of their organization. I mean, sure, Roush Fenway lost a bunch of sponsors in top two things, but at least they still have, they have Advocare, they have Fastenal, they have Sunny D, Fifth Third Bank, Performance Plus, a couple other sponsors. Let's see what Richard Penny Motorsports has. They have STP for like two races, Air Force for two races, and now they have a new sponsor, Click and Close. Yeah, Click and Close is going to be sponsoring this team in 2018. And guess what? They're the primary sponsor for three races. Are you kidding me? They're sponsoring the Daytona 500, Phoenix, and Texas. That's it. That's got to be the worst primary sponsor I've ever seen. I mean, if you're going to be at least sponsor, at least sponsor 10 races, if you're going to call yourself a primary sponsor, I mean, they're as useful as, I mean, they're as useless as Unifirst. Unifirst only sponsors three races. When you have Casey Kane's car based on sponsor, I know that they did extend to Martinsville and Kansas, but still, such a disappointing sponsorship announcement. Really? Are you kidding? I mean, that's just how desperate Richard Petty is. I mean, only like 27 more races to go until you're completely fully sponsored. So, yeah, and like I said, this all could have been avoided if they would have negotiated, if they wouldn't have had that one slip up with Smithfield. They could have had Eric Amarola in one car and Bubba Wallace in the other. Now, basically, they're starting from scratch. That's basically what it is. They might as well should have just said, Bubba Wallace, you're going to the 44 car. We're going to find you sponsorship. Because basically, that's what ended up happening. Smithfield, their one sponsor they negotiated for the whole season, decides to leave. 
But now, like I said, in the kiss up deal, that's probably only going to be, I guarantee you that's only going to be a marketing scheme. You know, that's what I think it'll be. It'll only be a marketing scheme probably where they can promote Richard Petty. And, you know, like they can have like Tony Stewart and a couple other drivers in the same ads. Maybe at best two to three races. But after that, don't expect Smithfield to even sponsor them that much. But wow, yeah, yeah, what a great job, Richard Petty. I mean, thank goodness they got rid of Enterprise out of that name because they are in no shape or form an Enterprise. They are, I mean, Front Row Motorsports might be better. Than, Germaine Racing is better than them. I'd take Germaine Racing with Ty Dillon over this team. I would take, let's see, who else is it? I would take. JTG Doherty Racing over them. That's how sad this organization has gotten. And for one of the legends in the sport, how is this team owned by Richard Petty? I mean, at least RCR, sure, they're not even that great, but at least they keep it competitive. This team is in no shape or form competitive. It, they're just a train wreck. So yeah, after the whole Smithfield fiasco, Eric Amaral gets released probably because I... I believe Smithfield probably won in Almirola. They didn't want Bubba Wallace. I think, like I said, Smithfield, it's not a racial thing or anything like that. I believe it's because Smithfield goes after, like, the family person. You watch in their ads. They feature, like, a typical middle-class family of four. They don't, they don't want to sponsor a young kid, I don't think. That's probably why they left. They wanted Almirola. But I believe Richard Petty, I, I, what I believe is he got desperate and decided wanted, just wanted to force Bubba Wallace into the 43 and that wouldn't have to worry about sponsorship. But guess what? Now he has to worry about sponsorship and he doesn't have Smithfield. So yeah, that just sums up this team. Anyways, how I feel about Bubba Wallace, I, re I, I want him to do good. But I really don't expect much. He is going to get clobbered by William Byron next year in the Cup Series, even if he's on, even if the team, William Byron, doesn't live up to expectations and he misses the playoffs next year, he will be miles ahead of Bubba Wallace. I mean, good to see him get a ride, but I, I personally wouldn't expect much. It's, I mean, maybe he'll have a couple good days, but I, I, I really think he, he'll be lucky to make the top 25. Just the way this team's been going, they are basically out of money now. They don't have any sponsorship whatsoever except the seven races. I really, they're going to be, there's going to be some desperate moves coming soon. I think they're trying to get Xfinity to sponsor him. They're trying to get Coca-Cola to sponsor him. They're trying to get a couple of the NASCAR official partners. They're trying to basically beg for sponsorship. And that's sad out of a team run by Richard Petty, 200 race wins. I mean, I will never bash Richard Petty as a driver, but as an owner, what has he done with this team? Ever since he retired, this 43 team has just been mediocre at best. I mean, I don't know what's going on. They're just a train wreck right now. They could have built up to something, but instead they got nothing, and it'll continue to happen down into the future, unless they decide to switch manufacturers, and it looks like they're sticking with Ford. For me, with Bubba Wallace, it goes on three things. Stay with Ford, they're going to be mediocre, unless Ford finds a crazy amount of speed in the long term. Chevrolet, you have a chance to be the next Richard Childress Racing. I, if he was at Chevy, I would say be a little bit closer between William Byron and Bubba Wallace for Rookie of the Year, but I would still put William Byron easily over him. If they went to Toyota, however, honestly, I think Toyota would be the premier destination. I mean, Toyota, you got to think of it. They only have like seven, eight teams. I mean, who cares? I'm technically six, or next year, five, because BK Racing technically sucks. So if they, if, they, if they decided to go to Toyota, you never know. I really think he could have an Eric Jones, I mean, maybe crash a lot less than Eric Jones, but 
Yeah, I think he could have maybe he could have a good year, but I, I really think this team's gonna stick with Ford. They're gonna continue to slouch in the back of the pack, get beat by startup team, teams that started like ten years ago. And yeah, I I don't think it's gonna get better for this team. And anyways, I'm gonna I'm gonna briefly talk about click and close. So basically, like I said, the announcement. The announcement, there's a joke I came up with, you know, click and close. You click on it, three races close. I mean, there's not really much to see there. But like I said, with NASCAR, it just seems like every single time they gain a sponsor, there's always some catch to it. I mean, sure, click and close is now an official partner in NASCAR. That's good. And there's a sponsor in NASCAR. That's good. But the one downfall to it is it's only three races. It's really not much. Realistically, their presence won't be felt in this. And that's, it seems like, let's look at Brad Keselowski. It's another win-lose because you get, I mean, Discount Tire finally steps up on Brad Keselowski's car. Finally. And in that, today we hear Miller Lite is scaling back to 11 races. Only 11 races. That's kind of sad for a beer company. And I'll, I might get make a NASCAR view on this. Next week is going to be on the SHR announcement, maybe in a couple weeks a- after the season. So it's always, it seems like it's just a win-lose. We are getting more sponsors into NASCAR. We, uh, there is probably, if you compare sponsors from 2005 to this season, there are a lot more. But they're for a lot less races. And, I mean, revenue is... Going down with sponsorships, we've seen a lot of teams have this, and I'm, I'm, I might make a is NASCAR going downhill video too. I should save it for that, how sponsorship revenues are basically going down, and it's kind of sad. But anyways, on Bubba Wallace, hopefully Domino's decides to sponsor some races. I mean, that would be an awesome paint scheme, but I guarantee you they probably won't. They'll look at this team and say, nah. Maybe they should go to, what, Eric Jones or Daniel Suarez or something instead. I mean, they might actually have a shot. But bottom line is, I don't think Bubba Wallace is going to do that good unless they switch the manufacturer or unless Ford gains a heavy amount of speed. I, I feel bad for him. I think it's good for a diversity standpoint to have Bubba Wallace now in NASCAR. And I guarantee you... NASCAR is probably also, they're going to put Danica Patrick in a car somewhere down the line. She is going, I, Danica Patrick, I'm still making this statement. Danica Patrick will have a ride in 2018 in Cup Series. Either the rumored Roush Fenway ride, the rumored RCR ride, or anywhere else. She will be in the Cup Series in 2018. And I guarantee you also, Matt Kenseth will retire. That's just the sad reality Bubba Wallace is a ta- I think Bubba Wallace is a talented driver. I can't wait to see his opportunity in the sport. I hope he doesn't become like a Danica and gets marketing like crazy. I want his talent to be the main driving force, not how he's different than everyone else. He needs to be treated. He needs to be treated like every other driver on the track in order to gain fan. I, I mean, in order to gain his stability and say you know you can also say that with like you know chase elliott or something they know they maybe they should stop seem like everyone's now trying to compare him to dale jr now they should just and then bill elliott obviously they should just say chase elliott's a race car driver and we're going to measure him on his wins not because he has a famous father and so that's just what i'm saying so bottom line hopefully he does good Hopefully Richard Petty Motorsports doesn't handshake away this one. So that's the end of the video, guys. So if you like this video, give a like. Like on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter. Subscribe for more videos. This is NASCAR Racing Fan 2015 signing out.